If you don't have time for this entire video, here's a wrap up. The three subjects that matters the most is physics, English, and chemistry. And try to get as many excellences as possible, especially the level 2 excellences, as they really matter when you're applying for scholarship. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tony Tian, and if you're new to this channel, I'm a third year medical student here at University of Chicago. In this video, I'll cover what subjects should you choose in NCEA to maximize your chance of getting into medicine or dentistry, and tips on getting the most scholarship possible, and what you can do if you already missed taking some of these subjects. Alright, so regardless of which university you're going for pre-med, the structure of the course are incredibly similar. Both Auckland and Otago requires you to do 7 papers in total, and a selective 8th paper which you have a bit of freedom to choose a course of your interest. The 7th paper mainly focuses on 5 areas, physics, chemistry, biochemistry, human body basis, biology, and population health. These areas can be delivered across 2 papers or be given different paper codes, but in general the content is very similar. So what kind of course should you choose in high school to get yourself best prepared for these 5 topics? And let's start with the easy ones. So physics is a must pick, even if you absolutely hate it. The first year physics of uni is pretty much a repetition of level 2 and level 3 physics, with very slight extension. This includes every single internal and external topics, so if you want yourself to be best prepared, you need to be really familiar with these content. By which I mean that you really understood each topic and can utilize the concept to solve whatever questions that's been thrown at you. And a good indication that you're probably prepared for uni is that you're getting straight excellences in level 2 and level 3 physics. Personally, I did really well in high school physics and ended up getting 98% in how I first year without attending any of the lectures. Chemistry and biochemistry also covers tons of topics in level 2 and level 3 chemistry. Here are some of the topics that's definitely gonna be in house at first year. Chemical reaction in aqueous environment, thermodynamics, organic chemistry, molecular chemistry. If you haven't heard of these terms, you'll go over them at some point in year 12 and 13, so don't feel too stressed about it. However, beyond this, chemistry and biochemistry are also going to cover a lot more new and challenging content, including things like how chemotryptin work, it is an enzyme that is in your stomach to break down protein, and all these concepts are based on a solid understanding of the fundamental chemistry. So if you want to do well, you gotta make sure that you're pretty solid with these contents covered in high school chemistry classroom. A lot of people may think biology is a must pick because medicine is kind of related to biology, but the actual uni level biology only has a few content that's covered in level 2 biology, like how mitochondria work or how a chloroplast work. Some human related and microbiology related topics are also in the uni paper. Just imagine what you need to understand as a doctor, basically how human cells works and how pathogen works, and pathogen includes bacteria, fungus, virus, etc. Personally, I've never taken biology in CA level 2 or level 3, but I didn't notice any significant lag or struggle when I'm learning the content comparing to the others. And by chatting to some of my friends who has done biology, both level 2 and level 3, and some of them even have done scholarship, they mentioned that the content in uni is only partially involved in level 2 biology, and level 3 biology is completely irrelevant. Therefore, taking it or not is utterly up to you. Population health. This area mainly focuses on the understanding of the nature of health, health of the minor groups, and biostats. So the first two sections are wrapped around philosophy and Maori and Pacific culture, and the only subject that would facilitate this is English. English may seem irrelevant for a science-based degree, but it's actually very crucial and I'll discuss it later in the video. Biostats is essentially just stats with some health-related context. The NCS stats doesn't really give you a significant enough advantage as it covers a mixture of designing, conducting, and interpreting statistical study at a superficial level, whereas a 100 level, meaning first year uni level stats, is focused on interpreting sophisticated academic research data. Therefore, taking stats or calculus for NCA doesn't really matter, but taking a math subject is still highly recommended, as you want to be familiar with mathematical thinking, which is crucial for your physics, chemistry, population health paper, and future learning in medicine. The last one is human body system. So this is not covered by any NCA subjects that I personally know of, but I did go to a really small school, so we didn't get offered too many subjects. This section mainly covers anatomy, physiology, and histology of different body systems. So basically these three terms essentially just means what it looks like, how it works, and what it looks like under a microscope. The system covered includes but not limited to musculoskeletal, immune, renal, digestive system, etc. 
I'll roll out some videos over the summer as well to give you guys a overview of what content is covered in these papers just in case you want to do some pre-study. Last but not the least, I want to talk about English here. This is probably one of the most hated subjects of all time for a lot of people. And especially if you're a science person, you might just despise it even more. But in a degree like med or just any science paper, English is pretty much a nightmare that you never escape. In the last three years, I wrote tons of reports, essays, reflections, etc. And my friends doing science degree like biochemistry have to write reports almost every week. And I'm incredibly grateful that I've taken English in high school which taught me how to craft these writings and write a piece that's not too horrible. So you definitely want to acquire the skill and polish it up as early as possible rather than working on it in uni while having other much harder exams alongside. So after talking about the academic side of things, I want to talk about the financial burden. So as you all may know, uni is quite expensive if you have a look into the tuition fee, especially if you want to do a degree like medicine or dentistry that's like 6 years or 5 years and each year costs around 16k. And the best way to get yourself some financial support through these tough years is scholarship. I wish I knew this a bit earlier but the level 2 in CA grades is what matters the most because when you're applying for scholarship the level 3 result is still pending and the level 2 is all what you can show and based on how many excellence credits Otago can offer you around $5,000 to $30,000 for the duration of your study. And this depends on the total amount of excellences you've gotten so when you're applying for scholarship all the result matters. So basically you want to get as many excellence credits as you can. If you can get more than 80, go for it. Some of my friends who's getting the top 32k scholarship had around 120, 130 excellence credits back in high school. Scholarship exams can sound intimidating, but how I first do would be even more intimidating. So give it a crack. I remember learning scholarship calculus for just a week and only answered about half of the questions of the exam. And after the exam, I was like, there's no way I can get a scholarship, but I ended up getting it. Just remember it is just as intimidating as it is to you as to everyone else. So at the end, I want to talk about what you can do if you didn't take some of these subjects. So you mainly have three options. You can do a foundation year slash summer school. You can study by yourself. It's quite doable because there's tons of resources online. Personally, I would recommend Khan Academy. I personally use this platform to get myself through the tough house I first your content. And I'll upload some summary videos as well so you know what area to focus on. If you're just missing one subject, it doesn't really matter. Just have some fun over the summer and trust your ability after the year starts. There's so much more to life than just having a good degree. But if you're missing like two or three of these subjects, like you didn't take both physics and chemistry, you definitely want to get yourself a little bit more prepared. As you know, in pre med, you're doing eight papers, which is four papers in each semester. And it is quite a lot. Most of the people who's not doing health efforts or any pre med program, Program, they're only doing about six papers per year. Alright, so hope you find this video helpful and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Peace.